I began my lockdown in those fresh spring days of mid-March. It felt like we were some kind of strange, hibernating animals that had suddenly heard the subliminal call from deep consciousness, a call to enter into the isolation and the dark. A world had to be left behind. This was the familiar taken for granted world. Not knowing what was before us, I made, with a sense of foreboding and already in the social distancing regime, a visit to Lendelok. But Lendelok still offered quiet, stillness and connection. On that day, that last day, before we learned the language and the habits of lockdown. On March 19th, the World Health Organization announced that the COVID-19 virus was present in 190 countries. In the weeks that followed, I descent into a darker and more liminal space for us living as a community of cocooners, there were new limitations on our lives, a new dispensation of isolation and social distancing became the norm. One by one our tangible, visible and familiar links with the outside world shriveled and died. Beyond our windows. The days passed from late spring to early summer. For a while, walks outdoors were permitted, alone. On most days I took my camera with the intention of documenting the changes in the natural world. I was drawn to the tiny details, to the curl of a leaf, to the emergence in a flower, to the signs of burgeoning life. It became a long Holy Saturday experience, a descent into a space confined and silent. What to do in this silence? I engaged with old and familiar pieties, daily mass online and rosary in the evening. The prayers, rituals, and the voices were strangely reassuring and comforting. I connected with parishes across Ireland and in the UK. From all I heard the same message. We miss you, we pray for you, and we pray for one another. We stay together in community, in love and in faith. Who can forget that Friday evening in late March when we watched the rain slanting down across St. Peter's Square and witnessed a lone figure in white ascending the steps to speak to us about Jesus calming the storm. This was a moment when Pope Francis was the voice of reassurance. Be not afraid. Not to every generation is it given to live in a time of pandemic. It happened in 1919. It happened during the cholera epidemic of the 1830s. It happened during the Black Death in the 14th century. It happened in the 7th century in Ireland. Each time it occurred, it brought the world to a standstill. And it confronted whole populations with mass annihilation. It also happened in 3000 BC, wiping out almost the entire population of the ancient Near East. And each time, the world returned to a new place, 
illumined by a renewed faith and a desire to create, to share joy and wonder, to tell the good news story of what is possible when life is renewed. It was that ancient pandemic that preceded the great flourishing of world civilization that began with a man, Abram, himself a descendant of pandemic survivors. Abram, leaving Ur of the Chaldees to write a new story of hope, deliverance and possibility. It is a crime to waste a crisis, has been a popular meme during our enforced isolation. What have we done to ensure that this crisis has not been wasted? What have we done as communities? What have we done as a nation? What have I done personally? Or has it all been just one long Netflix binge. We are now challenged to re-enter the external world, renewed and fired up with a new vision of how things might be. For myself, I have used this time to learn two new languages. I have renewed a transatlantic friendship with a weekly WhatsApp phone call. I have written down thoughts and feelings almost every day on my iPad. I have read widely. I have engaged with others in communal prayer and reflection. I have rediscovered the Bible through online reading guides. I have discovered the deep faith of men and women across the island on social media and in webinars. A new world illumined by the shared experience of reaching out and being held vicariously in the faith embrace of others has emerged from the darkness of lockdown. And yet, I cannot deny the reality of the darkness. Solitude is a dangerous time. Dark thoughts lurk in every corner. For the first time in my life, I recognized myself to be an elderly, solitary man. A cocooner. I belong to the race of the vulnerable, those who may not go abroad safely. There is a long tradition here for such thoughts. I think of Marcus Aurelius, of Epictetus, Pascal, and more recently Heidegger, Sartre, and our own John O'Donoghue. We cannot run away forever from the essential loneliness of life lived towards death, the ultimate lockdown from which there is no easement. To know oneself as essentially alone in the world is a great gift and a grace. I always think of the words of that ancient monk of the Egyptian desert who said, the essential task in life is to know that you are alone in this world with the eternal, with the eternal one with God. What you make of that determines everything. This is the darkness that is, in truth, a greater light. I know that during this period of lockdown I came to recognize this darkness. It made me uneasy, even irritable. And yet, its light remains. There is no escaping its truth. I found it in the Psalms, the ancient voices that spoke my language. 
that remains a grace and a blessed discovery. As we emerge into the new world, we rejoice in the power of nature and of human companionship to heal us. We try to bring light where darkness has reigned. We learn to rejoice in the simple pleasures of our common life together. We will have discovered the shallow consolations of the consumerist society. We will affirm our commitment to a more just world for all. We play our part in working with the natural world rather than against it. Let us conclude with a quotation from Pope Francis. God created us for communion, for fraternity. Now more than ever, the pretense of focusing everything on ourselves of making individualism society's guiding principle has proven to be so illusory. We have to be careful. When the emergency is over, we can so easily fall back into this very illusion.